good afternoon. It's lovely to have such a crowd. My husband won't believe me, actually. He knows I love talking to everybody, but this amount of people, he laughs. I, um, it's been a long journey, and before I go into my little screen and tell you um, where I went there, which was lessons from Tuscany, it's about doing things on a budget. And this um, tour that I went on for 14 days to learn in Tuscany was free. I managed to get 14 days fully paid for in Tuscany on a learning journey and it's about finding out things like that and where you can go to learn and what you can do but basically so I'm Ruth and we bought the farm in 2010 I was in school teaching and my husband was carpentry and we decided right I don't want to do this for the rest of my life we've been brought up in farming and the children had grown up and moved away Let's buy some land, as easy as that. Let's just buy some land for our retirement in years to come and see what we can do. And let's see if we can go back to our childhood, raising the cattle and raising the pigs. It was a hard thing to do, but we managed to purchase 18 acres in 2012 with putting some rare breed pigs on the farm and we were both still working and doing this in the morning before we went to work and when we came home. And then what we did is, me not waiting to wait for things, I'm not, I haven't got much patience, we bought two pigs, but in pig, pregnant pigs. And they were due in about four weeks time. So I said to my husband, come on, we gotta move on. Let's get this paddocks done and let's get these piglets so that we can raise them the way that we wanted to raise them. Four weeks time we had our first litter of a six and a seven and we raised these pigs to slaughter weight and we had came back and we had just pieces like uh, pork chops and, and different cuts and the family and friends absolutely loved them and they said that they hadn't tasted pork like this for a very long time so we thought well we must be doing something right but my aim was this farm has got to pay for itself so just raising money um just raising the pork to try and sell for a good price and just pork pieces is not going to pay. So what else can I do to add value to our products? So over the year, we sort of looked at bacon, sausages, burgers, and we had all their made. At the time, we used to get them made for us and we paid for somebody to make them for us. And then it was like, right, okay, then we need to have somewhere where we can make this product ourselves. So we, ha we had a little unit and we made the burgers and the sausages ourselves. And my next thought was, hang on, I'm getting three pound a pound of bacon for six slices of bacon. Now, if I cook this bacon, you don't need to be a mathematician you can get perhaps three pound for two slices in it. So I had said to my husband one day, I'm gonna cook all this food, I'm gonna get a little catering trailer and park it in the bottom of our village. He said to me, you what? I said, I'm telling you, we need to earn more money and we'll do it on the weekend and see how it goes. All right, he said. <laughs> so off we go, we buy a catering trailer and we start flipping them burgers that we just made, them sausages and that bacon on a little a motorway da, um, bypass in Ponte Dewey. And it started, we had a few one day and then a few more the next day and then it started to get really busy. And I said to him, this is great, we need to do this five days a week, not just the weekend, it's starting to pay off. So Andrew said, right then, okay, I'll finish work first and we'll see how it goes. Andrew finished work, started to work down in the catering trailer five days a week and it really paid off. But what we had was then some people come to us and say, do you know what, you need to put these in for some awards. And I thought, hmm, right then, okay, award-winning bacon, award-winning sausages. We might get more money for that. So I came to the Royal Welsh one Christmas and put our products in for the competition that was here. And I came back crying my eyes out because I'd had my first gold 
and two silvers for the three products that we put in. And I thought, I've got to carry on. But not, I'm always trying to think what best we can do to add value, but on a minimum budget. So while he was quiet on the catering trailer one day, I did a little bit of research and came across a project, Fresh, down in Pembrokeshire that was paying for you to go to Denmark for seven days to see what else you could do to add products, to add value to your products. So I said to my husband one day, Andrew, I'm off to Denmark. He said, you what, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Denmark. I'm going to see what else I can do to add value to our pork. So off I went, there was a group of 12 of us and I stayed in a pig farm with 52,000 pigs. And that was the best week that I had ever had because it taught me what else I could do to add value to our products, but not just that. You think 52,000 pigs, it was something that I didn't want to do. They were indoors, all my pigs were outdoors, free range. So I knew that wasn't the way, I was never gonna be that big. We had a small farm, we, we, we have 40 acres now, but they made beer sticks. And I'd never heard of beer sticks or curing or salami or anything like that. And it opened my eyes basically, but I paid nothing for this trip. And I came back and from this trip, I said to Andrew, we are gonna be making salami. Again, he says to me, you what? <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going now? So I find now help to guide me from Kauai, which is just round the corner by there, which is fantastic. They mentor and they show you the way to go and advise. And without them, I don't think I would be where I am today. And also, they pointed me then into a direction of the Welsh Food Centre in Ceredigion, which is another centre. There's only three in Wales. There's the Welsh Food Centre in Ceredigion, there's um, the Cardiff Met, and there's one in North Wales. So I don't know where some of you are from, but there's three in Wales. Now, what they had in Cardigion was drying chambers that could teach me how to make salami. But it's not cheap. You have to pay every day to be there. But what we did is we continued. Our, we still worked along the... I hadn't given my job up yet, but we worked on the catering trailer to fund this. And for 18 months, I was in the Welsh Food Centre, Caradigion. And although we are in a small little village and um, I, I make salami and you would think not many people know us, but today I have people that know me in New York, Canada, Helsinki, Italy. And you know, it's about shouting out there on social media but it's about making a good product. It's about thinking outside of the box. What else can you do to add value to your products by finding ways to learn, help you learn, and where you can go to learn? And if finances are low, which, you know, I'm a farmer, I found Shropshire College, which is about these lessons from Tuscany that I went for a fortnight and I did not, it was fully funded. So Shropshire College, write that in your books and they do trips every year. They do one to Italy and they do one to Iceland. Now I don't know if the funding is still there but it's been going a couple of years but it is worth an email to drop them your names and say, hi guys, you know, if you have anything else in the calendar, could you please look at us? This is what we do. And if you don't, can you point me in the right direction of somewhere where they do? It's about getting out there, talking, chatting to people and um, getting out there. So I went to Tuscany and um, with the college and I learned quite a lot but saying that I think they learned a lot from us as a group when we went out there and I spoke to actually people with marama cattle now these marama cattle are like waggy beef basically in this country and they had they looked at them at very high end and their prices was extremely extremely high but because they were so high they used them in just cooking them they just cooked the beef and they had farm shops and they had 
um, farmer's market where they cooked them, but they were just high level to them in Tuscany. So I'll just show you a little bit about my trip there. So basically I went to beef farms, pig farms where they made pochetta, salami, vineyards. So this learning um, journey that I went on covered everything because it wasn't just me that went on it on a pig farm. It was beef farmers, fruit farmers, ice cream makers, cheese makers. There was a range of all groups that went on this trip. We went to coffee producers, farmers markets, tourist coffee shops, horse riding, storytelling in the woods. It's unbelievable what they all try and do on their land to make extra money. Cooking lessons, sheep farms doing buffalo cheese, chicken farms. And the biggest thing that I found in this little village in Tuscany where we stayed is the collaboration and the cooperatives that they made. And I think it's about working together and working with your food producers. So that is the cattle. It's very much like, well, you've got the Highland cattle, but the beef is very, very rich. There was free range pigs, no different to back home with us really, and the pigs that I raise, I raise saddlebacks and large blacks and they're all outdoor with me. So I didn't learn anything there really in that one. The salami making I did, the salami making was something that I wanted to see and I worked with some high-end charcuterie masters and I loved it, but the way they did it, we have different systems back here, but I learned quite a few things to bring home that we could use in our own unit and some of the recipes and things like that that they done and I still do to this day. I went to the most exclusive vineyard in the world but I've got to say they did a James Bond video here the year before we went but yet they started in a little two acre field maybe 20 years ago but that's where they started and that was just building it up and building it up until at the time they had um, people that went in and and just helped give them money and you know they had a collaboration and they all worked together they had investors in the end when they needed to, but yet they started off at a very small farm. The beekeepers, the beekeepers there were amazing and there was a lot of beekeepers that went on this trip and they came up with things that they'd never seen in this country that they were all bringing back really. You know, propolis and things like that, we didn't see so much here, but the beekeepers and the honey and the wax and the companies that I see popping up now is a lot more than since I went on to this trip. They had a lot of fruit farms there and it was because they were growing maybe lemons and then selling the lemons to an ice cream maker and a dairy farm which was just down the road. So they worked together and they were both selling their uh, product. The ice cream makers, so they just worked with the fruit collaborators and they bought the lemons and everything else, the strawberries, the raspberries, and they just made everything for the tourists and they just loved working together. There was a lot of sheep and cheese makers there that give you lessons on making cheese. But don't forget now mind, this trip was free. I didn't pay for this trip. I'm just trying to showcase and show you what you can do on a budget and if you know you want to go on one of these amazing trips just to learn, they are out there. They're hard to find, but they are out there. There was coffee makers that was bringing in the coffee. I know there's quite a lot of that do this in this country now, but I'm go I went on this trip three years ago and I can see the difference in three years when I went on that trip to now, how many people are now doing and gone into the food industry and gone into either, if it's not meat from the farm or honey from the bees or, you know, there's so many things that you can do, but you've got to think out of the box. The farmer's markets were everywhere. Now, I, I see the food festivals a lot in Wales and lots of food festivals, but the farmer's markets, 
there's a lot more now that you can go and you can start off small and you can start selling your products and you can see if they like them products or what ones that they do like and what ones are your best sellers. But it's nice to go and see and get ideas and bring it back to your farm. The coffee shops, the tourism, um, it's about, you know, I'm in the Scarlet's Rugby and I do, I've just taken on the kiosks in the Scarlet's Rugby and I do a lot there from my meat and beef rolls and pork rolls and the salami and everything. But what I do is I get some, I'm a part of the Welsh Fine Food Cluster and I say to the guys, right, you know, bring your products to me. I'll sell them. I'll sell them because the customer wants Welsh produce. They want to see that. They want the traceability. They want the story. And they love it. And it's very similar to the coffee shops there where they sell everybody's product in that coffee shop. The cookery schools. Now, even if you're a farmer, you love to cook, basically. And it's about, again, adding value to whatever you do. So, I mean, cookery schools, you can create, make a cookery school. You can, you know, have lessons. You can do courses on cookery. It's about thinking that way forward. The sheep farms, very similar to back home, you know. And the chicken farms, well, I didn't like the chicken farms, I'll be honest with you. I walked in them and I walked straight back out of them. But it, it also gives you an insight into why can't we have these chicken farms? People want free range chicken farms, people want free range eggs, they want, you know, they want different to that. But you learn that by going into these and coming back and saying, right, okay then, how about we got a few chickens? Let's start selling them eggs. Or let's start pickling them eggs. Do you know what? I have not been able to find one company that does pickled eggs. So if you know anybody, give me a shout. But what I found in Italy, which I think we do here, I think we do in this country very, very well, actually, in Wales, is their motto was, this hand washes this hand, and they both wash your face. Meaning, let's all work together. Let's collaborate. You know, let's do cooperatives and let's just, you know, give your neighbor a shout and say, right then, I'll buy that off you. I'll make this from that. I'll sell that. You're selling that. Let's just work together. But I think the story of, of Come Farm Salami is you're never too old to learn. Now, I'm being honest, I'm 57 and I started this journey at the age of 47. And I've got, I'm not stopping now. And I think to myself, I'm in a little village in Ponte Dewey, and if they can hear me shouting in New York, Canada, Italy, wherever, you can get your products out there. You know, you can get them products out there. But what you've got to do is you've got to make something different. You've got to think out the box. And you've got to you get your pricing right. And if you do that product and you have a good product, you can get it anywhere. And you can sell it because that's what the people want. Thank you.